Hi everyone and welcome back. Let's have a look at some of the best settings and my recommendations on how to set up the Xbox Elite 2 controller on PC. As you might know, on the Xbox Elite 2 controller you can manually change the behavior of the left and right stick by changing the position of the tension button. As a start, I would recommend that the left stick to be softer so it can help feel the movement a little bit smoother and fast. And the right, you can leave it on medium or hard. I personally prefer it on, to let it on medium. The rest of the settings will change it on the Xbox accessories app. Alright, so first thing first, let's download uh, the app Xbox Accessories, so we can you can download it from the Microsoft Store. This app will allow us to change all the settings on the controller, so customize everything. And uh, once you download it and install it, let's open it. And uh, you have to be connected either with a USB cable you know, provided with a controller or with a USB receiver, Xbox USB receiver. In this case, I have the USB receiver, so I don't need the cable, but you can use the cable, it's the same thing. You will have the same settings so when we connect the controller and open the xbox accessories app we will have this page here with all the um, naming in this case i have customized my name you can do it by clicking on these three dots here and rename the controller so you can give whatever name you want here we have other settings for example updating the firmware i will not update it because there is no new updates i don't want to install again the firmware here you can make vibrate the controller if you want to check how much is the vibration i usually turn almost off all the vibration and leave only the triggers a little bit one interesting thing is this uh, icon here that if you click it you can test if how the buttons are react i haven't seen people using that much i think this is really useful because whenever you change some settings on the left stick right stick or whatever buttons you you are changing and you can check it here if the settings you are changing are okay with you or not and then here we have the main page let's go to configure here one interesting thing here is that you can create as many profiles as you want and apply those profiles to one of these buttons here as you know we have three profiles here so you can press the button one two three and if you press it again you are going to see all the lights turn it off and that means that is the default profile i usually don't change that and leave it as it is because um in case you want to use a default default profile with no change you can use that one so let's say we want to create a new profile let's call it uh, fps for example and once you save that profile now you can start customization before starting customizing every button here let me show you guys for example we have fps profile once you click to the profile there is no slot it means that it's going to replace the default settings of the controller we want we don't want that because we want these profiles to be applied on each of those buttons so let me say i'm gonna apply to the slot number one and that's it as we can see it's applied to slot number one so whenever you press the, 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 the slot number one is going to apply that profile you can change the name of the profile if you want here you can delete it you can copy the settings and apply the same settings on another profile if you want to or if you are not going to change that much to the next profile you can copy some you can copy all the settings apply to the next profile and then you can start make some small adjustments just to have you know all the settings almost the same but with a with a small uh, changes so let's go here and change all the settings starting with this here we have the buttons so the mapping here is changing what the buttons on the controller are doing usually i don't touch the default buttons for example a b y x and whatever else i just leave it as they are the buttons you cannot change are the of course the pause button the menu button and the button that is allowing you to change the profiles of course you cannot change that and the um, power on and power off of the controller with the xbox logo you cannot uh, customize that what i find interesting in the xbox l2 is that you can shift and you can change the buttons here for example if you want the buttons on the back of the controller to be assigned to certain actions you can change it here for example let's say i want to this button here to be what can i say left stick click for example and i click ok so this will is going to act as a left stick what I've noticed here is that the Xbox accessory app doesn't have all the submenus for the shifting as the Xbox accessory app have on the Xbox series. So uh, here you can you can just use as a shift button, but you cannot assign a certain action to the to that button, which I find it a little bit strange to be honest. In this case i'm not going to use this say i want unmapped and also here i want so i don't want this 
buttons to do anything of course you can customize it if you want to map it as certain buttons but and here i usually want to duplicate the left stick click for example in fps you want that for uh, melee action or whatever else and this is going to be a jump so let's say a button moving to the next sub menu which i think is one of the most important settings here here we can change the left stick behavior so the assignment is primary because we want to be this the primary uh, button for moving for moving usually this the left stick you are using it for moving forward back left and right in let's say in the 99 percent of the games you you use the left stick for doing that if you want to move a little bit faster because you want to move left and right a little bit faster for example let me say in shooters usually you want to move a little bit faster so i have noticed that changing it to instant and the curve adjustment this is the curve adjustment it means that is going you can test it here before you change everything you can see the blue thing means how it's going to be the movement of the stick as you can see if you start moving it slowly it's going to be faster than the actual physical movement of the left stick usually i use that because i want to be faster moving right and left or if you want to run you want to move exactly starting as as soon as you press the button you want to start at that moment moving or running so i usually prefer to leave it on instant and the curve here you can leave it on medium but usually i leave it somewhere between here and here the calculation is radial because it's the most complete calculation uh, basically the um, so what it does basically the controller is going to calculate how you move the stick so if you move it in radial mo movement or you can choose even the axis independent or through or you can choose it in true diagonals i suggest you guys to leave it on radial because i think the calculation that the controller itself is making on the movement is the most accurate one so this is for the left stick which is the one that allows you to move a little bit faster the right stick usually you use it for when you aim or when you move looking up or down or left on right now depending on the game you are playing you can choose different settings for example in a shooter you want this to be not that much fast because otherwise you're going to lose the aiming because when you aim you don't want to look too much fast up or down or uh, or moving left on right but for example if you are uh, gaming on games that um requires you um, flying objects or planes or whatever else you might want to set this a little bit um, more faster since we're creating an fps profile we will uh, set the right stick to be a little bit between something faster okay but also something uh, acceptable for when you are aiming um, usually i prefer it to leave it on aggressive which might seems that it's going to be a little bit faster because as you can see when i start moving the stick it's going to move a little bit faster but what i do here is change the curve here to the third one because as soon as you move it's going to be let me say smooth then it's going to be a little bit more faster this you want to this this can be useful i find it to be useful personally but you might change this setting i find it to be useful when when you are aiming and then let's say uh the opponent player is going to move faster so you want at the beginning to slow down the aiming then if that object is going to move a little bit faster then you can so you can adapt your movement for the left for the right stick to be a little bit faster so at the beginning you want it to be smooth and normal and then to be aggressive and follow as much as possible the object which is moving in case it's moving once you are aiming in certain games the sensitivity curve or the curve adjustment can be changed in the games in the game itself but in majority of the games once you are changing the settings on the controller you are going to use these settings apply it to the game so i find this to be a really interesting setting the triggers here is really interesting because uh, what you can do here with the triggers is you can decide how much you want the triggers to to react when you are tapping them remember that on the back of the controller you can change how much reactive the trigger you want it to be so let's say we push it at the maximum so as soon as you touch the trigger is going to be reactive as you can see but let's change this uh, you can mirror trigger so whatever you change one is going to change the other one you i usually leave it in 10 but you can check uh, whatever is better for you so let's say as soon as i touch the trigger is going to immediately 
start the action as we can see this is the right trigger yes and this is the left one yes and here we have the vibration usually i don't use the vibration on this lower part let me say so i want to completely slow it down i don't want vibrations here and on the triggers i usually leave it at this amount just to have a little bit of feedback so i've noticed that the right trigger is the one to me personally that i don't want to have any vibration because it's the one that you are using for shooting the moment you are shooting to some object or to something the vibration is going to change the aiming because it's going to vibrate the controller and it's going to change your aiming the left trigger it's something you can leave it like so or you can even leave it at zero it depends i usually create the, each profile and i apply usually i leave it at the one or zero it depends let's say in this case we'll leave it completely to zero because we're going to use it on the shooter so we don't want the vibration to mess with uh, our aiming and our uh, how much fast we want to shoot the brightness here is the brightness of this logo here is completely relevant it depends upon you i usually leave it in full brightness it doesn't consume battery it doesn't change anything so let's move back here as we can see this profile is applied to the slot number one now you can notice here in these blue icons here it means that this is saying to us what changes we have done so for example here we have set up the sensitivity of the trigger to from 0 to 10 so and here we have the cursor applied to the left stick and to the right stick and also here we have for example what we want to be the behaviors of, of the paddles on the back so you can copy for example this one let's say you want to copy this profile and change a little bit not that much so let's say copy of fps let's say it fps 2 and as we can see he has replicated all the settings for example let's say we want this to be also instant and we want it to slow it down like so let's check it here might be useful in some shooters or in some other games the triggers i want to be even more reactive and as we can see this fps2 the second profile for shooters is not has not been applied to any profile so we want this to be applied to the slot number two of the profiles on the controller so as soon we press the buttons here it's going to switch between fps1 and fps from what i've tested generally in shooters with these settings the aim and shoot are fast because of the speed of the triggers and the movement while aiming is more smooth and keeps you on the target more easily i found these settings to be the best for me to start with and you might also start from here why not Keep in mind guys that every game has different settings and some of them might change the behavior of the controller once you are in settings and those settings in the game can override the settings you have done on the Xbox accessories app and you need to change something in order to not let them interfere but if you don't have any controller submenu or something similar then you are good to go. That's all for this video let me know in the comment down below if you guys are fine turning your Xbox Elite 2 controller and what are some of the settings you are using. If you find this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. Thanks for watching.